All right, hello everybody and welcome. So today we are making a shampoo bar. This is my Ice Palace shampoo bar. I shared it back in December, 2020. And uh, I'm also here to answer questions about my upcoming live shampoo bar workshop, which is gonna look a lot like this. This is also definitely serving as a bit of a, a rehearsal situation for me for the technology because I've I've set up some new things and uh, yeah, practice is always helpful. So I can I can see the chat and I got some stuff to make and yeah, we're just, uh, we're gonna get into it. But yeah, if you have questions about the workshop that I am doing, uh, ask, ask away. Uh, just a quick recap, the workshop is on Sunday, so it's in basically exactly 48 hours from now. I chose this time very intentionally, so I could say that exactly 48 hours from now. And I'm gonna be teaching you how to formulate your own shampoo bar. So I'm not sharing a recipe or teaching how to follow a recipe. I'm teaching you how to create your own formulations from, from scratch using ingredients that you're stoked about. So if you want it to be sulfate free or vegan or you know, kind of, you can, or natural, you can, you can do that because it's yours and you'll know how and you'll understand what you need to do. So that's, that's the gist of it. All right. Chibi says, maybe improve the lighting. Is it too dark? Cause I can, it was looking way too light before, so I was turning it down because uh, it was very washed out, but I can I can definitely make it brighter. All right. Da, 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 da. Wow, we've got people here from all over, from Ontario, from Greece, from the UK, from Jersey, Kentucky, Minnesota, Ontario, New York, Melbourne. Wow. I'll be in Melbourne next year. I'm looking forward to it. New Zealand, I'll be in New Zealand next year too. Um, yeah, all right, all right. If it looks a little dark, okay, well, I'm gonna go just change that right now because I can. Let's see here. Uh huh. That should be a little brighter. And then I'm gonna turn the lights up. How's that? Is that noticeably brighter? I can turn the other light up too. Pakistan, Florida, Texas, Mexico, California, Chicago. I was just in Chicago. Uh, Ecuador, Martinique. Oh, wow. All right. That's, yeah, that's amazing. Uh, yeah, I think this looks lighter on my screen. Let me, let me know. I can turn the other light up as well. Yeah, let's hop kind of back over here. So this is, yeah, this is a formulation that we are making today. If you want details on it, there's a full blog post for it for free on my website. There's also an old video. <laughs> um, so yeah, I like it a lot. The first thing, I, I want your guys' help. I'm going to add a bit of color to this formulation, which wasn't originally in the formulation. And I haven't decided what I want it to smell like. So I've got four options here. And uh, I want your opinion on, uh, on which one I should do. So this first option is Baja Cactus Blossom with a teal dye. The second option is Aloha Kiwi Passion Fruit with an orange dye. The third option is sparkling apple blossom with a apple green dye. And then our fourth option is sea salt and agave with a blue dye. So I am going to go turn up the other light and wait for the votes to, uh, to roll in in the chat. All right, that is as bright as that light gets, but I might pull another light in for uh, for Monday, for Sunday, Sunday. All right. 
Wow, these are really evenly split. <laughs> Simo really likes option four. <laughs> um, Oh my, oh, uh, I think I have seen more sea salt than everything else. This is not super scientific, but we're, we're gonna roll with that. So I'm just gonna put these away and we will get making. So this is the bar that we are making. Sorry, I gotta change this part. There we go. This is the bar that we're making. Um, I had a little bit of fun with it. I made this just th three hours ago, two hours ago. I made it at 12.30 and it's three now, two and a half hours ago. And it's already really, really hard. So that's one of my favorite things about the way I'm gonna teach you how to make shampoo bars on Sunday is they're like, they're, they get really hard really fast and they stay really hard throughout their life. So, love that. Dun, come on, there we go. All right, so this is our wet phase. Uh, again, if you want to see this all written out, there's a full partner blog post that you can go, uh, go check out for that. But we're gonna start with our wet phase. I am working on like I'm structuring this stream. So I'm wearing my dust mask for the shortest period of time possible because it uh, is terrible for the audio quality. All right, let's get making. I've got a little beaker here. And I've already weighed out my ingredients. So these two that I put watch glasses on top of just to prevent evaporation since I did this a couple hours ago. These are our two liquid surfactants. Uh, the larger amount is decoglucoside and the smaller amount is cocomatopropyl betaine. So these are both natural liquid surfactants. So this is where we're going to introduce the dye because it's water soluble and we really don't need very much of it. So we need to bloom it before we incorporate uh, really like we, if we try to add it when we've already got uh, the powders in there, it's not going to incorporate evenly. And so I want to get it in into the watery ingredients and dissolved. And we really don't need very much for a batch size this big. This is a 200 gram batch. Uh, we're looking for like such a tiny amount that honestly it wouldn't register on my scale. So I've got just a little bit here. You can kind of just see it on the edge of this glass stirring rod. And when you're working with dyes like this, you definitely want to be wearing gloves. Otherwise you, uh, or at least I usually end up with blue or pink or whatever a fingertip for quite a while uh, afterwards. They, they really do stain the skin. Lou says that they made the Ice Palace shampoo bar three years ago as practice and just pulled it out three days ago to use. And even though it's lost its scent, it's still rock hard and has loads of bubbles. That is awesome. All right. Gonna get this little rod out of here and move on to the whisk. We still have some little, little dark spots. I've got a tub underneath my, um, my work table. That's my dishes tub. And it's just like a Rubbermaid tub that I carry to and from the kitchen to, to clean up. Oh, Zill has asked how my curl journey is going. It's going really well. Um, I 
Just got my third curly haircut about ooh, three weeks ago now. And every time I get a new curly cut, I'm amazed at how much more my like waves slash curls really pop. I start to get really sort of noticeable kind of ringlet-ish situations. It's very exciting. Um, I've been sharing a lot of photos with my, <laughs> with my patrons because I kind of feel like I'm not really a, a channel about my hair, but I do, I am very proud of it a lot of the time and do enjoy sharing. Uh, and hello, Miriam, I'm so glad that you caught me live. All right, we're gonna pop this on our scale now and we're gonna get in the fragrance and our preservative. So I'm using Optifin Plus as our preservative. I really like Optifin Plus for shampoo bars because it is, helps bring the pH down a little bit. So that is, that is nice. Got my formulation written out here. We need two grams, which is 1% for a 200 gram batch. If you wanted to make this formulation natural, these are the only two, well, SCI is a bit debatable, but uh, more on that in the workshop. But these, if you swap these two ingredients out for natural ingredients, you'd have a formulation at least some people would consider to be natural. Um, you could use Geogard ECT instead of Optifin Plus, and uh, you would use an essential oil instead of the fragrance. So I'm using the fragrance at half a percent, so that's one gram. I get serious deja vu from this fragrance oil. I don't know what it's from. It kind of instantly transports me back to like early adolescence, but I don't, I don't know why, but I do really like it. So we're done with the scale now. Uh, yes, Stefania, you can definitely use different preservatives. I talk about this a lot more in the workshop uh, but yeah, like liquid dermal plus you could use, I think straight phenoxyethanol would be a good choice. Uh, yeah, you can definitely use different preservatives. And then we've got the last two ingredients from our wet phase. So this is citric acid and this is bringing the pH down because the decal glucoside is really quite basic. So we need to counter that and get the pH back down. And then this here, in the uh, 2020 version, I used marula oil. No, I used moringa oil, but this is marula oil, but you could really use any liquid oil that you wanted to. Just gonna whisk that to combine. Uh, Rebecca has asked, is the workshop live or is it a digital course? So it's a live workshop, but then you get the replay afterwards so you can watch it as many times as you like. And it also comes with a bonus cheat sheet with formulation guidelines and troubleshooting help. Some of my favorite uh, places to shop and kind of guidance to help you get, get your ingredients. So it's not a full course, but it's like a, an, an intensive on shampoo bars. It'd be like if you took a course and they had one module on shampoo bars, you know, this would be that module. Oh man, what a pretty color. And this color will chill out uh, once we get everything combined. So it's not gonna be quite, quite so blue. So we're about ready to get the powders going. Once the powders uh, are out and they're moving and they're still dry, I do need to have my dust mask on. So I'm just gonna quickly kind of talk you through what I'm doing. <laughs> before I actually uh, do it, because I don't think you're going to be able to hear me very well uh, through the dust mask. It's not awful, but just, just in case. 
So this is our dry phase. So this large one is sodium cocal isothionate. This, uh, yeah, this one is sodium lauryl sulfur acetate. This one's cornstarch, and this one's white kellen clay. So I'm gonna pop all of it in this bowl. I'm gonna stir it up with a spoon. This SLSA is quite like clumpy. So I'm gonna be kind of breaking it up with the back of the spoon. And then just like we're making pasta dough, I'm gonna kind of make like a little well in the center, pour in our, our blue liquid, and then start incorporating that. And I'll kind of stir with the spoon until I get to about a, like if, you're a, if you've made biscuits before, like a shaggy dough kind of stage. And then I'm gonna get in there with my hands and really make it a uniform dough. And then once everything has wetted out, I'll take my dust mask off because it's not all floaty floaty. Uh, if you have not worked with dry powdered surfactants before, they, they love a nose, they love a mouth, they love a, they love an orifice, a moist orifice. And so as soon as these are kind of moving around and you inhale, they're very light and floaty and it goes straight up your nose and straight in your mouth and it's unbelievably unpleasant. So you need a really good respirator. This is my favorite respirator. I mean, I've, I've owned two respirators, so it's not, I'm not a respirator expert, but I really like this one. I mean, it's purple, it's a pretty color. Uh, and it's from Lee Valley, which is one of my favorite Canadian stores. I always find something that I love at Lee Valley. All right. Uh, Stefania, this is SLSA, it's not SLS. I've never even worked with SLS. I don't own any, I've never bought any. This is SLSA. Um, hello, Ray Ray from Australia. Um, Andrea, 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 Andrea has asked if we could put it through a strainer. Yeah, you absolutely could. I did think about that, like pressing it through a strainer. I just didn't, but you absolutely could. Uh, and yes, this is cornstarch from the grocery store. Da, da, da. Will the workshop be helpful for co-wash bars? No, that is a different style of formulation. Um, I have been working on those, but they are, they are different. I will talk about how to get conditioning elements into your shampoo bars, but they won't fully be a co-wash bar. That's a, that's a different structure. All right. Mm -hmm. And Miriam's asked, what courses have I taken to learn everything? No, um, uh, what I've taken, I have two diplomas from Formula Botanica, a diploma in organic skincare formulation and a diploma in organic hair care formulation. And then I've also been doing this for 12 years. So I have learned a lot, well, more than 12 years. Humblebee and me is 12 years old. I started formulating before that. Um, so yeah, I've, I've just got a lot of hand-on experience. Uh, and uh, Stefania, if you read the list there, it says sodium lauryl sulfoacetate, not sodium lauryl sulfate. So it, it's, the words look kind of similar, but uh, sodium lauryl sulfoacetate is the S-L-S-A, the acetate is the A in sodium lauryl sulfoacetate. All right, dust mask on. Uh, I'll, I'll chat a little bit. You guys can let me know in the chat if you can actually understand me. All right, Luke, I am your father. <laughs> let's, uh, let's get going. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. All right. All right, good to know that you can hear me. I'm sure it's probably not as good as it was before, but uh, that's great news. I'm gonna be stirring for a while, so this is a great time for you guys to ask questions. Lots of little clumpy bits in here. I picked this bowl up at a thrift store yesterday because uh, after I did some of my dry runs, I realized I really needed clear bowls so that you guys could see what was happening. And I really lucked out that the thrift store had a set of two of two sets of these nesting Pyrex clear glass bowls. And 
absolutely thrilled. Uh, how's Lottie doing? Lottie is doing very well. She is just loving, loving life lately. I have booked her in with us, with our, our neighborhood sitter for Sunday so that uh, I don't have to worry about her being, being bored while I'm, while I'm on the live. Or if somebody knocks on my door, I don't have to worry about her barking up a storm because she is a very effective dog bell. Um, <laughs> and I, I'm pretty sure we would hear it loud and clear in the middle of the stream. So she's going to go hang out somewhere else for the day. Joe, I'm really looking forward to that conference in Melbourne. Uh, I'm less looking forward to the flight. It's going to be a very long flight, but I'm spending about... 10 days in New Zealand and then going on and spending about two weeks in Australia. I'm flying in and out of Melbourne uh, and I haven't really decided what what I'm doing beyond speaking at the conference which is just one day so obviously I will have some time but I am yeah I'm really looking forward to it. I, mean, I haven't been to Australia since I want to say 2018? No 2019. Uh, so yeah, I, I can't wait. It's a good, good chunk of uh, Canadian weather to miss to March. Um, would I do a conditioner bar too at some point? Yeah, I would love to do a conditioner bar workshop. I've got some more exploration that I'd like to do with them first, though, to feel really confident that I'd be giving you guys the best, most thorough. Um, kind of experience with that. But I have shared several free conditioner bar formulations that, uh, that I really like. Ooh. What hair care actives am I loving in my products lately? I am absolutely in love with proteins lately. Uh, ever since I've been on my kind of wavy hair journey, I've really learned my hair loves protein and really needs it to be really happy. And so I am just like nuts about putting protein in things these days. Oh, Rebecca, the conference is called, was it the Australian Soaping and Candle Conference? It's run by uh, Rhonda, the lady behind the Nelson Soapery. So yeah, you should be able to find it pretty easily on, I think, especially Instagram. She's very active there, but really looking forward to that. I see a question up here. I'm not doing a conference in New Zealand because I have not, uh, I didn't find one that was at the same time. If you know of one, that is, well, I'll be there. I'll happily send them an email and see if they'll have me. Uh, the sea salt fragrance is from Yellow Bee out of Canada. Um, I don't sell any of the products that I make. I teach you how to make your own. That's my, that's my jam. Uh, yes, you can definitely sift the ingredients together. Just make sure you're wearing your dust mask while you do that. Oh yeah, Zill, I love the K18 products. Oh my goodness. I almost wish they didn't work so well because <laughs> they are pretty expensive, but they have been just wonderful for my hair. Uh, have I ever made a hair oil for growth and strength? Mm, not really, no. I can't put that much oil in my hair, so without it just looking really dirty. So it's not something that I really use, uh, hair oils. All right, I think that is wet enough. So I'm gonna take off my mask. See if I can not pull my hair out like I usually do. Huzzah! All right. All right. So here we can see, yeah, we got a dough, right? Like a pretty malleable dough. And that, that's the dream. I'm just gonna kind of really work on making sure I've got everything off my gloves and worked in and out of the bowl. Uh, Denise, I'm not planning on doing another live version of this 
workshop, but the replay will be available for purchase. Um, or if you like purchase it now, you'll get access to the replay after the live has happened. I know the time zones, of course, don't work for everyone. Um, but I'm hoping to do other live workshops for other topics in the future. And I'm always happy to hear what you guys would like to, uh, would like to see as a topic. Ooh, so Zill says um, that she made a third batch of my vitamin C suspension. It's so good and so affordable. Yeah, I adore that formulation. I that you know I use it all the time. It's so easy to make, and uh, you know L-ascorbic acid is such a gorgeous ingredient, but it's so persnickety. It's so it, it oxidizes so quickly. So removing water from the the equation is just Oh my gosh, it just, it's wonderful. It makes life so much easier. All right, so here we have, we have a dough. And so now, now we just need to shape this dough into a bar. I'm gonna do two bars. This is, this is a lot of, this is a lot of bars. So I'm gonna divide it up, grab our scale again, turn that on and uh, weigh out kind of half of it. And so today I'm just gonna hand shape this but this dough is really, really versatile. Like you can see it's, it's very smooth and dense and pliable. So if you wanted to smash this into a mold, if you wanted to press it, if you wanted to use, like for a press, you could use something like the bath bomb press if you have one, but you could also use something cheaper like a moon cake press, or uh, I know they also, uh, there are companies out there that make like bath bomb presses that are hand powered. So lots, lots and lots of options here. But I know in the workshop, I promise I'm teaching you how to make shampoo bars without needing fancy equipment. And so there's few things less fancy than your own two hands. Yes, forbidden cookie dough indeed. <laughs> that could actually maybe be a fun, uh, like an April Fool's one. Maybe make my brambleberry, the, 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 sh the Lush style shampoo bars I did with brambleberry and make, uh, like choose a cookie scent, make the conditioner bars chunks like brown so they look like chocolate chips, <laughs> and then make the, the dough like a creamy, a creamy color. <laughs> Just include a warning tag on that. I know I've spoken with readers, um, patrons, I think from Italy, who told me that it's actually not, you're not allowed to make and sell products that look like food that aren't food there. That was interesting. That looks pretty good. I'm gonna do the other one. This scale is um, is the Jennings TB500. I love, love, love this scale. I've had it since 2020 and it's still going strong, which I, <laughs> you, you can't say about the cheaper scales. So this one I checked recently, it's about 90 US dollars right now. It has a maximum weight of 500 grams, which for the Americans is kind of just over one pound. It's a pretty good maximum weight considering the accuracy is down to 0.01 grams. So that level of accuracy allows me to make pretty small batches as I'm doing my development work, which is just fabulous. So, you know, if you're making something and you're not sure it's gonna be amazing, it's a good idea to make kind of the smallest amount of it that you can make accurately. So when I'm doing shampoo bars, it's usually about 30 grams, which is roughly one ounce. And uh, yeah, having that two decimal point accuracy is amazing. Another amazing thing about the scale is that because it plugs in, you can turn off auto shut off. I don't know if you guys have ever been weighing anything out and then your scale has turned off on you halfway through. Oh, oh my goodness, the stress, the rage, the horror. So yes, being able to turn it off is really nice.
don't know if you guys can hear that noise, but it's, um, it's amusing me. All right, well, there we have two bar looking things. And then I had some fun today. Uh, I, I remembered that I had these little like stamps. They're soap stamps, but we can absolutely use them here. So I've got a little B and then uh, my friend Belinda from Love Your Suds sent me this cute little heart. So yeah, let's, uh, let's do some stamping. Uh, will the product shrink after some hours? It will get a little bit smaller for sure, but generally not um, like recognizably so. You're not gonna look at it and be like, oh my goodness, it's gotten so much tinier. Um, you usually only lose a couple percent of the, of the weight. I did a whole like really kind of nerdy blog post and video on drying shampoo bars and how much they dry uh, earlier this year, if you wanna check that out. Just having, just having some fun here. Um, Liz has asked, can you rewatch the entire video later? Uh, this one, I, I, I plan on leaving this one up and you can absolutely rewatch the live workshop from Sunday whenever you want to. It will be up for as long as I'm around. <laughs> uh, having way too much fun here. Okay, that's probably enough hearts. Oh, how cute is that, hey? Um, do you recommend doubling or even tripling your recipes to make more bars at once? Once you know that you like a formulation, yeah, absolutely, go for it. Just when it's a newer formulation, it's nice to start small so that you know you know what you like and you can refine the uh, refine everything. I've been making <laughs> it's so cute. Uh, I've been making lots of shampoo bars as part of my prep work for this workshop filming myself or like practicing doing lives and whatnot. And I'm usually making like a 30, 40 gram shampoo bar so that uh, I don't make myself six years worth of shampoo in one weekend, but Christmas is coming up. So maybe I should start scaling those batches up. Ah, <laughs> oh, this is way too fun. Oh, that's so cute. Oh, having so much fun with that. Uh, oh, delightful. Um, so yeah, like really all that's left now is we leave these to dry. Um, three to five days is usually more than enough. Uh, if you want, again, more details on like how long to let a shampoo bar dry, uh, I did write yeah, a whole really big <laughs> involved blog post about that. But this one gets quite hard quite fast because yeah, this bar is now three hours old and it's, it's very hard. And these are already getting noticeably, noticeably harder as they start to dry out. So that's, yeah, well, there we go. That'll, that'll have me set in shampoo for a while. And one of my favorite things about making shampoo bars is that the cleanup is always really easy because it's shampoo, right? like it's, it's great. Like there's, it's very, very easy to just kind of scrub everything out. Um, but yeah, I'm gonna hop back uh, to answer some questions here. Uh, so Anna asked, what's the material of the soap stamps? I'm not entirely sure. I'm pretty sure this one yeah, this one was 3D printed uh, from Belinda. And I would bet that the other one probably is too. Oh, maybe not. I'm really not an expert in this sort of uh, manufacturing at all. Uh, this one's, you know, they're both some sort of a plasticky kind of kind of thing. They're very like hard. I. Uh, so yeah, you can ask questions in the live workshop. There's a live Q&A after the workshop portion. And so obviously the, the Q&A is only available if you are in the live, because that's when I will actually be there. Um, so the workshop itself is gonna be like 90 to 100 minutes. It's testing in a, at about 100 minutes right now. And I, I'm looking for some stuff to cut, but 
I'm, I'm starting to feel like everything that is in there should be. Uh, so it'll be like a 90 to 100 minute workshop. And then after the workshop, there's a, a Q and A, and that's probably gonna be at least 30 to 45 minutes, but knowing me, I might just stick around until <laughs> I'm about ready to pass out so I can answer as many of your questions as I can. And then if you are looking for more support, there are still a few VIP spots left. And so if you sign up for that, the week after the workshop, I'm doing three small group calls. So you have a week to like go make some shampoo bars, make your formulation and kind of get your, get your gloves dirty, right? And then you can come back and ask more questions in a small group setting uh, a week later. So there's still a few of those left. Uh, Carol, so these are, uh, they're sulfate free, which is generally recommended for color treated hair and they are acidic, which is also generally recommended for color treated hair. That lower pH keeps the cortex of the hair, which is the core of it, cortex, from swelling. So when the cortex swells, which happens in higher pH environments, the cuticle, which is those scales that coat the cortex that, you know, if you've ever looked at hair under a microscope, they, they do this. Uh, the Sciency Hair blog is wonderful for this sort of information. And the metaphor she uses is it's like if you had post-it notes on a balloon and then you blew the balloon up and like you can just imagine all the post-it notes would be like, Wee! Uh, but when they do that, they start catching on each other and it can also uh, like get the hair, uh, allow your dye to fade faster as the, the cuticle opens and uh, makes the cortex more vulnerable. Would I recommend the full course in form of Botanica? Yeah, definitely. I would start with their Diploma of Organic Skincare Formulation. That is where I started, learned a lot, really helped me tighten up my formulation game. I've had quite a few people tell me that when they go through my website, they're like, oh yeah, this is a pre-Formula Botanica formulation. Like I can tell it's just not as good. It's not as, not as tight, <laughs> not, as, uh, not, as, not as professional. Uh, Andrea's asked, tell us about your class on Sunday. Yeah, so this is a, it's gonna be a 90 to 100 minute workshop on how to formulate your own shampoo bars. So if you wanna make natural shampoo bars, we are gonna be talking about that. You know, if you're looking to avoid certain ingredients, you can, cause you're formulating your very own. And so it is gonna be kind of this style of shampoo that we just made here. So it is a Sindet style shampoo bar, not a cold process or hot process, like soap style shampoo bar. And uh, yeah, I'm, I'm teaching you everything that I have figured out and learned about making shampoo bars in the years that I've been doing this. I'm so excited to share this with you. There's like kind of formulation guidelines and teaching about kind of different surfactants that you can use and different actives that you can use and kind of what to do if it's too hard and what to do if it's too soft and you know, uh, just all kind of like how to change and adjust the pH. It's just, oh, it's so much fun. Uh, I'm so excited to share this because it's, it's honestly, it's not that hard to come up with your own formulations. And the beautiful thing about making them this way too, is like, as you saw, that was really quick, right? So you can like really iterate quickly and learn quickly. And it's, oh my goodness, it's such, such a good time. Let's see here. Da -da. Um, yeah, let's see here. How, so this was a long time ago. When I first started making stuff, my first thought was I'm going to sell things. And um, I was gonna sell, I think I came up with the name Humblebee as like that was gonna be my brand name. But then I was like, oh, I'm, I'm way more interested in writing blog posts right now. So I'm gonna make like a partner blog and then I'll start selling stuff later. And so I thought Humblebee and me made a really, like it was a nice sounding kind of partner name for a brand that was going to be called like, you know, Humblebee Beauty and Skin or something like that. Uh, and then, yeah, the, the selling thing, yeah, the, <laughs> it wasn't for me. So that's how we ended up with Humblebee and me, but I wanted it to have something to do with bees in it because I um, really love bees. I was working with beeswax a lot at the time. I really love like buying honey when I travel. So I wanted it to have bees in it. And also it's just a really fun word, like bumblebee, humblebee. It's, like, mm. <laughs> so, it's fun. Uh, the Q&A is available as a replay only to, uh, to VIPs. So um, 
yes, if. <laughs> uh, say, like, if you are in the live there, yes, but if you are looking at the replay, it's only for the, um, for the VIPs. This shampoo bar is for dry hair or oily hair. I... This, we'll, we'll talk about this more in, in the, the workshop and kind of how, how these distinctions sort of work. You could, like, you could say that this would be, like, this would be a, this is a fairly cleansing bar, but the surfactants are fairly gentle. And so I will talk about ways to make the bars gentler and more cleansing. I mean, you could sort of say that maybe this is a more clarifying bar if you have drier hair and maybe more of an everyday bar if you have oily hair. Uh, so sometimes, like a lot of that stuff is often like more like marketing. Um, a lot of things are a lot more versatile than companies that sell you stuff really care to tell you. Thank you so much for buying my book. I really appreciate it. For anyone who doesn't know my book, Make It Up, is all about how to make makeup. So if you want to make your own like foundation and lipstick and stuff, um, it's, I'm, I'm very proud of it. And yeah, you can find it on Amazon and at lots of bookstores too. Yeah, so we will be talking about, yeah, how to make gentler shampoos, which can help with um, drying. We'll be talking about actives that you can include that can help with frizz. So I know that for my hair, protein is really, really useful. Uh, for helping with frizz for me um, and then after that you would you'll, you'll need conditioner too for curls and uh, generally some hold as well and so those aren't covered in this product or sorry in this workshop uh, but you know a good shampoo is definitely step one of, uh, of not not having frizz yeah you can definitely make oil free shampoo bars and I, I, I will touch on that in the workshop as well see here yeah so all of I have really hard water here uh, and they, they they work really well traditional soap really doesn't work as well in hard water but one of the reasons uh, kind of industry initially moved to detergents over soap is because they perform so much better in hard water than traditional soap does so yeah you get great bubbles with this stuff in hard water and yeah I know because I live in a place where I have to descale my kettle like every week <laughs> otherwise I'm going why is my tea like gritty and it's like it's because it's it's the mineral buildup from just like a week yes <laughs> it's just I need a clone man but yes I would love to write another book I have an idea stay tuned <laughs> so yeah we will yeah we'll be touching on this in the workshop too on how to make the bars milder ingredients to choose formulation strategies to employ but for dry hair i would definitely be choosing the syndet mildly acidic style rather than a um where'd my brain go there it's back rather than like a traditional soap kind of used as a shampoo I'd consider it, but I would say that all ingredients would probably be like a 28-hour-long <laughs> workshop, uh, it, or a never-ending workshop, really. There's so many of them. But I am thinking about some workshops that would be really beginner-friendly and help people. Um, just, I often hear from people who have questions that are just, they're really hard to Google. Like you, you kind of Google it and nothing really useful comes up because maybe it's a question that has some terminology overlap with a different niche. So when you Google it, it's like, well, that's not useful. I'm not making beer or whatever. Um, so I am thinking about some ways to kind of try to help uh, smooth smooth your way into DIYing if you're newer to it. So this is This is something that I am thinking about. Um, these ones aren't dry yet and I don't I don't want to get them wet now because then they won't like last as long as I'd like them to but if you do watch the original video for this I'm pretty sure that has a lather demo I'm not gonna swear to it because that video is three years old and that's I don't remember the last time I watched it I don't remember what I put in it three years ago is whoosh, but I'm pretty sure <laughs> I'm pretty sure it's in there uh, but somebody did say earlier in the workshop that they uh, recently used this bar and that the lather was amazing. And that is generally what I 
I remember. It does have quite a lot of um, quite a lot of surfactant in it, so it, it's, it's yeah, pretty pretty burbly. I have not tried mob makeup products. I have not even heard of them. Ooh. Ooh. <laughs> Going controversial. I will say a lot of in ingredients that I see used in rinse off products that probably don't have any benefit when they're on the hair for like 45 seconds. Like when somebody's like, oh, you know, here's, I put hyaluronic acid in my shampoo. And I was like, why? What is hyaluronic acid gonna do for your hair in a product that is rinsed off almost immediately? This is a very expensive ingredient to basically just be sending down the drain. Like why, why? <laughs> so that, that I, I'm, I'm not convinced that there's a good reason to put really expensive ingredients in, uh, in wash off products in general. And that would definitely apply for, uh, for hair care products. Yeah, so I totally agree. I, I was absolutely like all gung-ho on baking before I really got into formulating. And there are so many, so many parallels. Uh, it's, it's wonderful. I feel like being a formulator makes me a better baker. And my love of baking that kind of predates my love of formulating definitely helped me be a better formulator. All right, yeah, this is, I think this is a good question to kind of uh, wrap up on. So you can sign up at workshops.humblebeeandme.com. I will pull up the, uh, the, there's a link, I put the link in the description box for this video. Um, so you don't need the products by Sunday because we're not making something live together. I'm teaching you how to create your own formulation live. So really the materials that you need like a pen and paper, because you're gonna be writing out your own formulation and then you can go make it. So if you do already have some ingredients, I absolutely do encourage you to kind of choose ones you already have. So you could just go make the formulation as soon as the, as soon as the live is over. But yeah, this is your formulation. So there isn't an ingredient list because you haven't made your formulation yet, but I certainly will be providing you with lots of options and places to shop. Um, if you lived in Calgary, you would actually be able to get the ingredients right away because uh, we have quite a few physical stores here that you can go um, go into and shop with. But uh, I'm not sure about you know every city in the world, obviously. <laughs> um, yeah. Right. All right. Um, to add on the VIP, when you're in the cart, you'll see it as a little as a little box that says like, would you like to add on the VIP experience? And then you just check, check it off. So it's not mentioned on the landing page. It's just once you actually hit like, get your, get your seat or get your ticket. And then, um, and then it's there. Ooh, I have done a couple solid facial serum bars. So you could uh, check those out. There's a pressed passion fruit one from last year. That's really gorgeous. Uh, so yeah, I've got a few, got a few options there. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. So yeah, there, that's, uh, <laughs> like how much of, yeah, there we go. There, this is my, <laughs> my workshop. And I would love to see you there. It's in um, pretty much exactly, well, uh, 47 hours and 10 minutes. Oh, Carol has asked is, it says the class is not for beginners. It's not for total beginners. If you've never, used a scale before, if you've never made lip balm before, I think this would probably be a bit over your head. But if you have made, you said you've made cold process soap. Oh yeah, yeah, if you've made cold process soap, you're good. I don't feel like if you've made cold process soap, you can do almost anything. Uh, you know how to handle lye, you know how to use a scale, you got patience, yeah. Yeah, if you can make cold process soap, you will be absolutely good. Um, yeah. All right, guys. Thank you so much. I'm going to uh, work on this lighting and see if I can make it a bit brighter, crank up my ISO. Perhaps the um, aperture won't go any, any wider on these lenses. Uh, 
Thank you so much for your feedback. Thank you for being here. I am so excited about this workshop. I'm, I've had so much fun putting it together and rehearsing it. I'm so, I'm so excited to just like empower you to create your own shampoos because it's so fun. Uh, yeah. All right. Have an absolutely wonderful rest of your Friday. Somehow it's already Friday and I really, really hope I see you on Sunday. Link for the workshops in the description box below or workshop